In this lecture, we're going to pick up with the ideas we left off with in the previous lecture and talk more about TNB. In particular, we're going to do some examples of computing these unit vectors, as well as the curvature and the center of the osculating circle. So we've seen t hat, the unit tangent vector before. Given a smoothly parametrized curve r of t, you find t hat by computing the velocity vector and dividing it by the speed. That gives you t hat of t, which is a vector valued function in its own right. We can compute its derivative, t hat prime. Whenever that is not the zero vector, we take that vector and divide it by its own magnitude to create the unit normal vector. And then once we have those two vectors, they are unit length and pairwise orthogonal, which means that when we compute the cross product t hat cross n hat, that defines another unit length vector which is also orthogonal to the other two, and that is our unit binormal vector. In our first example, we would like to find the unit tangent, normal, binormal vectors, and also the curvature for the parametric curve r of t equals 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t, t squared, at t equals 0. I'm going to work out this problem, and what I'm going to do is try to distinguish when we need to treat these objects as functions of t, and when it's safe to plug in t equals 0. Whenever we start a problem like this, the first step is typically to go ahead and compute the velocity vector. So don't spend too much time wondering how to start the problem. When you have r of t, go ahead and compute it to get r prime of t. So the velocity vector for any input t for this parametric curve is negative 2 sine of t, 2 cosine of t, 2t. That's just term by term differentiation. That's r prime of t. Let's go ahead now and plug in t equals zero to get the velocity vector at that one particular moment when we're interested in. I'm going to put that over on the right and I've tried to distinguish color here. So this is our general velocity vector. And at the moment when t equals zero, our velocity vector is zero to zero. From that, it's not too hard to work out what the unit tangent vector would have to be, but let's treat this as a harder problem than it is. So I'm gonna pretend like I can't immediately see what the speed is. The speed in general would be the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is going to be the square root of four sine squared plus four cosine squared plus four t squared, or in other words, the square root of four plus four t squared, or if you like, you can factor out that two and write that this is twice the square root of one plus t squared. That's the speed in general. Now let's plug in t equals zero over to the right, and we get that at the moment we're interested in, we have a speed of two. Now we can write down general t hat. So I need to take r prime of t and divide it by the speed as a function of t. I cannot write down the unit tangent vector as a function of t if I use any of the specific quantities that we've already computed. You need here to work with general t. Okay, so we take this vector and divide it by two times the square root of one plus t squared, and we get this. I'm going to leave one divided by the square root of one plus t squared out in front as a scalar. For me, that's easier. You can bring it into each component if you want to, but I'd rather just keep that scalar out front. So that scalar, one over the square root of one plus t squared, times the vector negative sine of t, cosine of t, t. We are asked for the unit tangent vector at zero, so I can go ahead and plug in. When t equals zero, our unit tangent vector is zero to zero. As I alluded to earlier, that's easy to read off of the velocity vector, right? So we want a unit length vector pointing in the same direction as the velocity vector, so you could have anticipated that this would have to be the unit tangent vector. To compute the unit normal vector, n hat, we need to differentiate this quantity. So that's why it's so important to keep everything here as a function of t, because when we compute a derivative, we can't have plugged in a specific moment. We need to be allowing our input t to change. To compute this derivative, I'm going to use the product rule. So we have the derivative of the scalar times the vector plus the scalar times the derivative of the vector. Okay, so the derivative of our unit tangent vector as a function of t, 
using the product rule is going to be derivative of the scalar times the vector. That looks like this. So with chain rule for that scalar, and then I just leave the vector as it is, plus the scalar times the derivative of the vector. I advise you not to try to simplify too much yet. So you could start trying to simplify this first expression and combine this all into one vector or something like that. But I recommend at this moment, going ahead and plugging in little t equals zero. This whole first term will go away when we plug in little t equals zero because of this two t out front. So this whole first part will vanish. And moreover, our scalar is actually just gonna be one for the second part. So when we plug in little t equals zero, we get t hat prime simplifies greatly to just negative one, zero, one. The unit normal vector at the moment we're interested in is just a unit length version of that vector. So since the length of that vector is the square root of two, which is a lot easier to calculate than trying to calculate the length of t hat prime of t in general, right? Like I would not want to compute that vector's magnitude. We can actually now work specifically at the moment little t equals zero and just eyeball that the length of this vector t hat prime at zero is the square root of two. If you realize that you can save yourself a lot of time and heartache compared to trying to work with this general expression. Because we're working at the moment little t equals zero, I can go ahead and say with the unit normal vector at that one moment is, it's t hat prime at zero divided by its own length, which again, is not too bad. It's negative one over the square root of two, zero, one over the square root of two. I do not have n of t. I do not have the unit normal vector in general, but that's okay because we were asked to find this at t equals zero. which means that we can also easily calculate the unit binormal vector at that one moment. It's t hat at zero cross n hat at zero. So we set up our cross product with the specific vectors that we've already computed. And we get that the unit binormal vector is one over the square root of two, zero, one over the square root of two. Lastly, we can find the curvature right at zero it's the length of t hat prime divided by the speed. So that's the square root of two divided by two. That's the curvature right at zero. At this point, we're done with the problem. So we found t hat in general, but then we were also able to find it right at zero. And then we were able to find n hat, b hat, and the curvature right at t equals zero. So by solving this problem this way, I hope you start to see when you need to work with little t and when you're allowed to plug in a specific moment. Again, the rule of thumb is that whenever you need to differentiate something, you need to keep working in generality. Do not plug in a specific input before taking a derivative. So for n, b, and the curvature, where we're able to just work at a specific moment in time because at that point, those calculations do not need any further differentiation. Let's do another example where we're going to work through most of those calculations. Again, distinguishing when we're working with functions of t and when we're working at the moment t equals zero. This problem is a little bit different. We are asked to find the radius of curvature for the curve r of t equals t squared cosine of t sine of t at the moment t equals zero. So we're actually looking for rho of zero, not rho of t in general. Then we wanna find the coordinates of the center of the osculating circle right at t equals zero. Okay, the phrase radius of curvature is new. This is a little bit of a strange phrase, but what it's asking for is the radius of the osculating circle. And the radius of the osculating circle is one over the curvature. So we need to find the curvature in addition, we're going to be looking for the coordinates of the center of the osculating circle. The osculating circle lives in the osculating plane, which is the plane containing t and n. So it seems like we need to compute t hat, n hat, not clear if we need b hat. 
Okay, so we're definitely gonna need T hat, probably N hat. We're gonna need the curvature to find the radius of the oscillating circle. So let's start computing. And again, the first step is usually to compute R prime, but before we do that, I'm just gonna make a quick remark here that at the moment we're interested in, we're actually located at the point zero, one, zero. I don't think I mentioned that in the previous example, but you can always plug zero into your parametric description of your curve to see that we're actually at the point zero, one, zero in space. Okay, now we start differentiating. So let's compute r prime of t. Term by term differentiation gives us two t, negative sine t, cosine t. I've written that on the left. On the right, I'm going to plug in the moment that we're actually interested in. So at zero, the velocity vector is zero, zero, one. You might look at that and realize, hey, that's a unit length vector. So that tells us that I've already found t hat. But you could also compute the speed. We'll need this. So the length of the velocity vector in general is the square root of one plus four t squared. So when little t equals zero, the speed is one. So in general, t hat of t is one over the speed times the velocity vector. So that's one over the square root of one plus four t squared times the vector two t, negative sine of t, cosine of t. And at the moment we're interested in, it is indeed just the velocity vector zero, zero, one, because that was already a unit length vector. Next, we need to take the unit tangent vector in general and compute its derivative. So t hat prime of t is again, derivative of that scalar I left out front times the vector plus the scalar times the derivative of the vector. For me, that's, that's a little bit more organized. And moreover, when I plug in little t equals zero, the whole first part goes away. That's not always the case, of course, but that's how it worked out for this example and the previous example. So at little t equals zero, t hat prime of zero is two, negative one, zero. The unit normal vector is a unit length version of this vector. So then I can just look at this and say, hey, the length of that vector is the square root of five. That tells me that at little t equals zero, the unit normal vector is two divided by the square root of five, negative one divided by the square root of five, zero. We need the curvature in order to compute the radius of the oscillating circle. So the curvature at the moment we're interested in is the length of t hat prime divided by the speed. So that's just gonna be the square root of five. That tells me that at that one moment, the radius of curvature is one over the curvature. So that's gonna be one over the square root of five. We've answered the first part of the question, but I'm out of room, so let me erase everything, and then we will find the coordinates of the center of the oscillating circle. Now we're ready to find the coordinates of the center of the oscillating circle at t equals zero. Again, that's the circle that's like the best fitting tangent circle to that curve at that point. So here's the information that we need. We need to know where we are. So that's r of zero placing us at the point zero, one, zero. We need the unit tangent vector that was zero, zero, one. We need the unit normal vector, that was the vector two over the square root of five, negative one over the square root of five, and zero. And then we need the length of the radius. So that was one over the curvature or one over the square root of five. To determine the coordinates of the center of this circle, I think it's really important to sketch a picture and understand the vector arithmetic involved. So let's say this is our curve r of t, and at the moment little t equals zero, we are here. So that's r of zero, that's at the point zero, one, zero. I'm not gonna draw this to scale though, so I'm gonna end up drawing the x, y, z axes kind of far off to the side. Okay, next we found the unit tangent vector pointing us along the curve. Then we found the unit normal vector that points us into the bend. It's perpendicular to t hat. And importantly, it's pointing us along the radius for the oscillating circle. So if I sketch the oscillating circle out here, 
This would be pointing us along the radius, although it's not necessarily the radius itself because the radius isn't necessarily unit length. So let's say that the center of the circle is located out here. We know that the length of the radius is one over the square root of five. So again, this is actually not at all drawn to scale, but it's a general principle so that we can set up the equation correctly. How do we find the coordinates a, b, c of this point? Now to see how this works in general, what I'm going to do is first add in the origin and the coordinate axes. So here's the x, y, and z axes. Then I think it's important to understand which vectors are in standard position, which vectors are not in standard position. So t and n I've graphed out here at the point in question. However, the coordinates of r of zero are the coordinates of the position vector for that point. So again, this is not drawn to scale, but I can imagine that this vector would be zero, one, zero. So these coordinates describe the vector which starts at the origin and lands on that point. And then at that point, I've sketched t hat and n hat. Now, what am I looking for? I'm actually looking for the coordinates of a, b, c, which are equivalent to the coordinates of the position vector for that point. So I would like to have the coordinates of the vector which starts at the origin and lands at that point. Now we step back and say, how do I get from the origin to that point through quantities that I've already computed? And what you see right here is vector addition. So we need to take r of zero, go from the tail of that at the origin to the head of that on the curve, and then do vector addition with a scaled version of n hat. So I would place the tail of n hat there and then scale it in the direction of ABC, and that is exactly how we've sketched this picture. So we're gonna have r of zero plus the length of the radius times the n hat vector. So written as a vector, because we're doing a vector sum here, ABC can be found as R of zero plus the radius times the sense of direction. So that's going to be from tail to head, and then from tail to head where I'm stretching in hat in order to land right on the point ABC. Okay, that's the general principle. Now back to this problem, R of zero was zero, one, zero. The length of the radius was one over the square root of five. That's the length we need to travel and the direction we need to travel was the n hat vector. So that was two over the square root of five, negative one over the square root of five, zero. Now I just do coordinate addition and we get two fifths, one minus one fifth, zero, or if you like it better, a, b, c are two fifths, four fifths, zero. That's the center of the osculating circle. So now we know that the osculating circle lives in the osculating plane. That's the plane containing t and n. The orthogonal vector for that plane is actually b hat, which we never needed to find in this problem. The center of the circle is 2 fifths, 4 fifths, 0, and the radius of the circle is 1 over the square root of 5. Let's finish this lecture with something that we will use in our discussion of acceleration, but I think it's a nice exercise to add here because we're looking at t hat and n hat and the relationship between them. Let us show that for a smoothly parametrized curve r of t, t hat prime is s prime times the curvature times n hat. So what is this? s prime is the speed. So what are each of these quantities? Well, t hat prime is a vector, s prime the speed is a scalar, the curvature is a scalar, so their product is a scalar, and then n hat is a vector. So what we're really saying is that t hat prime decomposes into the scalar times a unit length vector. In other words, the length of t hat prime is the speed times the curvature. Okay, let's recall that the unit normal vector n hat is t hat prime divided by its own length whenever that denominator is non-zero. So this tells me that t hat prime is its own length times the unit normal vector. 
In other words, we decompose that vector into a magnitude times a unit sense of direction. Let's also recall that the curvature is the length of t hat prime divided by the speed. Typically, I write the length of the velocity vector, but the speed is also s prime. So this tells me that the length of t hat prime is s prime times the curvature, or the speed times the curvature. Combining the two gives us the formula that we're looking for. That finishes this exercise to do with t, n, b, and also the curvature and the oscillating circle. Thank you for your attention.